Welcome to the next lecture on the course introduction to our software. You may kindly recall that in the last lecture we started with the, the logical operators. We had taken several examples and uh, through those examples we have uh, tried to understand the basic concepts and their execution in our console. We will continue with the, the same topic and we will try to see what are the different other options available for the logic operators. Okay. So, now just to have a quick review what we did in the earlier lecture, let us try to revise uh, the different symbols for different uh, logical operators. For example, you may recall that we had used the greater than sign to indicate the greater than logical operator and then we had used the greater than or equal to sign as another logical operator less than sign for say less than logical operator and less than equal to and exactly equal to was denoted by two equal to signs and not equal to was denoted by exclamatory sign followed by equality sign. The negation was denoted by see here exclamatory sign and uh, double denoting the AND logical operator under different types of conditions and similarly this uh, bar and double bar they were also indicating the OR logical operator. And similarly we had done uh, some other operator like at X OR and inside the bracket that was used to test whether uh, the statement for either OR condition. And similarly, we had used another statement is true that was used to test whether a statement uh, called as x is true or not. And similarly, true and false are the two words which are reserved for the logical operators and we cannot use it uh, and say, uh, say as variable or at any other place by our choice. Right. Okay. Now, after this quick revision, let us try to take some more examples and we try to understand how these logical operators are going to be executed. So, let me take the first example where I am trying to generate the data uh, from 1 to 6. That means, now x is my here variable which is containing the data 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is another approach to generate the data. Another approach that we discussed earlier that was to write down this number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 inside the bracket uh, causing the combined command. But this is another command that will use the same data and we are going to discuss about such commands in more detail later on. So, now briefly I have a data containing 1 to 6 integers and I want to check whether the values are greater than 2 and smaller than 5. So, my question is with this statement I want to check whether the values contained inside the x are greater than 2 and they are also less than 5. So, now if I try to solve this equation, let me take it here x equal to here 1. So, now 1 is greater than 2 this is false. Does 1 is smaller than 5? Answer is yes, true. So, now the combination of false and yes, this will yield false. This outcome is based on something called truth table that we are going to discuss after a couple of slides. Similarly, in case if I try to so suppose take here x equal to here 6. Now, the first statement tells me whether 6 is greater than 2, answer is here true. And similarly, if I try to say here whether 6 is smaller than 5, the answer here is false. So, now once again the combination of true and false, this will give me the answer here false and which is denoted here. Similarly, if I try to take here x equal to here 3, 
then the first condition say does 3 is greater than 2? Answer is yes, it is true. And the second condition x less than 5 states whether 3 is smaller than 5? Answer is yes, this is true. So, the combination of true and true will be true as per the truth table. So, and this answer is denoted over here. So, now you can see here we have operated the logical operators over a combination of two vectors. The first statement is containing some values in vector format and second statement x less than 5 is also containing the values in some vector format. Now, let me introduce you here another command. Now, in this example we have seen that we have a decision in terms of true and false, whether my statement is true or whether my statement is false and that is simply indicating whether a number is greater than 2 and the number is smaller than 5 simultaneously. But now, suppose I want to know what are the values in this vector which are satisfying this condition. That means, which are the values in this vector which are here greater than 2 and which are also smaller than 5. That is my question now. In order to get such an answer, I can write the logical statement like as follows. So, in order to do so, what we do that first we try to write down our requirement in the form of this condition here. Suppose, in this case I wanted to know that what are the values containing in the vector x are greater than 2 and what are the values contained in the vector x are smaller than 5 and I want to know what are those values. So, what I try to do? I try to write this condition inside the square bracket and here I try to write the variable name which is here x. And as soon as you try to do so, this will give me the, the numbers inside the vector x that are satisfying this condition. That means, the numbers which are greater than 2 and simultaneously they are smaller than 5. Now, let us try to solve this. Suppose, the first value in x is here 1. Is 1 greater than 2? Answer is no. The condition is violated and this will not appear in my answer. Now, I try to take here x equal to 2. Whether 2 is greater than 2? No, this condition is violated. If I try to take here x equal to 3, 3 is greater than 2? Answer is yes. And now we go to another condition, does 3 is smaller than 5? Answer is yes. So, that means 3 is the number which is satisfying both the condition that 3 is greater than 2 as well as 3 is smaller than 5. And similarly, I try to take here 4. Is 4 greater than 2? Answer is yes. And is 4 smaller than 5? Answer is yes. So, 4 also satisfies this condition. And similarly, if you try to write for x equal to 5 and 6, you can see here is 5 greater than 2? Answer is yes. And is 5 smaller than 5? Answer is no. So, that means this also that does not satisfy the condition and the same thing you can do for x equal to 6 and this results here these two values 3 and 4. So, let us try to do this operation on the R console. Okay. So, I try to first generate these values over here. So, you can see here now this is giving me 6 integer values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And now, I try to write down this condition over here. Now, you can see that here for 1 this is false, for 2 this is false, for 3 this is true, for 4 this is true, for 5 this is false 
and for 6 this is false. So, that means there are two values 3 and 4 for which this statement is true, right. But suppose if there are 1000 values in your vector or say 5000 values in your vector, it is very difficult to count that what are the values for which the statement is true and what are the values for which the statement is false. So, in order to this command that and I would like to know what are those values which are satisfying my condition and this comes out to be 3 and 4. Okay. And this is the same thing which I have uh, done in this slide and I have reported in the next slide. This is simply a screenshot of what we have done here. Okay. Now, let us try to the same example and try to see with other operators. We know that for the OR operators, we have used this vertical line that is available on your keyboard. Right. So, now I want to know that out of this values x equal to 1 to 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6, what are the values contained in x which are greater than 2? But now here I am saying or what are the values in x which are smaller than 5? So, if either of the condition is true, my statement will result in the true. Now, let us try to solve it. So, now suppose if I say here x equal to here 1, 1 is greater than 2? No, this is false. But my logical operator here, here is or. So, now I am trying to say if 1 is smaller than 5, answer is true. Yes, this is correct. So, now if any of the statement here or say here is true, the answer will come out to be true because I am interested if any one of them is correct, then my statement will be correct. In the case of and, this becomes opposite. Similarly, for say here x equal to 2, I am trying to say here 2 is greater than 2, this is again false. But my joining operator is or and I try to see here whether 2 is smaller than 5, answer is true and again the answer comes out to be true. So, similarly you can operate with x equal to 3, 4, 5 and 6 and can and you will see that here you get the same result here, all values are here true because all the values are greater than 2 or they are smaller than 5. Now, similarly on the same lines as we did earlier, I would like to know that here what are the values which are greater than 2 or smaller than 5. In this earlier statement, we had simply tested or checked the statement in terms of true or false. But now I want to know what are the values which are satisfying this condition. So, again I try to do the same thing that I try to write down the condition here, same condition and this is enclosed by the square brackets and I try to write down here the variable name and this is going to tell us that which are the values that are greater than 2 or they are smaller than 5. And you can see here, here I get this answer 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 and that we already have established analytically also that this statement is correct. Now, let us try to do this thing in the R console so that we can see here what answer does this R gives to us. So, I try to write in write down this condition and you can see here that everything is coming out to be true. Now, I want to know what are the values. So, as I told you earlier that instead of copying and pasting again and again, I can also use my arrow keys, downward arrow key and upward arrow key. So, for example, here I use here upward arrow key and I get here the same statement and I can simply just modify it. So, that will save my time and you can see here that I get the same answer that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 are the values which are satisfying this condition. Right, okay. So, let us try to come back to our slide and in the next slide, I have again just taken the screenshot 
of this operation and I have pasted it here so that you can try it yourself and you can verify whether you get the same outcome or not. Okay. Now, I try to take here one more example similarly on the same lines I am giving you here, but I would ask you that you please try to execute it with your own hand. So, here again I am trying to change my condition from the earlier example that I am trying to say here that now x is the same vector containing the value 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 and I want to check whether the values contained in the vector x are greater than 2 and this operator is for r or the values contained in the vector x are greater than 10. So, earlier I had taken the condition x is smaller than 5 and but now I am taking the condition x greater than 10. Now, I would ask you please try to do this exercise over here, try to take x equal to 1 and we can see here that does 1 can be greater than 2? No, answer is no and similarly I can check whether 1 is greater than 10 answer is no. For the combination of no and no that is false and false that is going to be here false and this is denoted here. Similarly, I would request you to do the entire exercise yourself and try to check it for x equal to 2, 3, 4 up to 6. And similarly, in the next statement, I am simply trying to find out here that what are the values out of this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 which are contained in x vector uh, which are greater than 2 or they are smaller than 10 and we get here an answer here 3, 4, 5 and 6 and in on the next screen I have taken only the screenshot of the R console where I am trying to get this outcome and I would request you that you please try to do it with your own hand so that you can gain some confidence also. Okay. Now, just coming uh, on say another aspect, this is the same slide that we used in the earlier lecture and I had explained that when I am trying to use the operator here and there are two options, one to use this uh, symbol or to use here double symbol and similarly for the or here I am using the single symbol and here I am trying to use the double symbol. And we had discussed that this is the shorter form and this we are calling as a longer form and the same thing here also. Right. So, uh, we had discussed that this uh, shorter form, so writing only one letter, this performs the element wise comparison in almost the same way as we try to do with any arithmetic operator and when we are trying to use the longer form, then it evaluates the entire expression from left to right, but it examines only the first element of the each vector. What does this mean? So, in order to understand the meaning of this statement, now I am going to take an example and I would try to show you that how it is executed and what is really happening inside R. So, I again take the same data set that I have here the values x containing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 and now I am trying to use here double operator, double AND sign. And my condition is the same that we use in the earlier example that x is greater than 2 and x is smaller than 5. That means, I want to know whether the values contained in the vector x are greater than 2 and simultaneously they are smaller than 5. And when I try to do so, I get here this type of answer, false. Let me try to show you here, otherwise you may not believe on me. Okay. So, I try to copy this data in the R console and let us try to find it out here. Right, and then you can see here you are getting this thing. 
On this screen, I would like to have your attention over this which I am highlighting. If you try to see, I have executed here the condition with a single AND sign and I am getting here 6 words for true and false. Whereas, here I am using the same statement, but I am using here 2 AND sign, but here I am getting only one word that is false. Why this is so? Do not you think that this is very puzzling that x has 6 values and here I am getting 6 outcomes, whereas here I am getting only one outcome. And if you try to see, this is the same outcome which I have copied and pasted here. So, now the question, question is, what is really happening? Let us try to understand. When we are trying to use here this double symbol and we are using here a vector, that means as I said, this is examining only the first element of each vector. That means, the first element of x vector here is only here 1. So, I can write this statement equivalently as say the first element x 1 is greater than 2 and x 1 is smaller than 5. So, now you can see here, it, this is saying 1 greater than 2 and this is saying 1 is smaller than 5. 1 cannot be greater than 2, but 1 is smaller than 5. So, this answer is false and this answer here is true and the outcome here is false. So, that when we are trying to use the double symbol, this operator is not continuing with the remaining elements in the vector, but it is operating only on the first element. And same thing if you try to see here, I have done it here. And I can show you here over the R also whether this holds true or not. So, I try to copy this statement, but before that let me try to show you here that what do we get with x 1. Okay, I will just write. So, you can see here with x 1, I am getting the first element in the vector x. Now, what I try to do here that I try to type out type this command and you can see here this is the same thing which we have given in the outcome and this is the same output which was obtained by the earlier statement like this. Right, okay. So, so now this is clear to us what do we really mean by the single operator and double operator. Right. And now in case if I want to know that what are the values which are satisfying this thing, then I can use the earlier command that first I try to write down the condition here and this condition is being enclosed by this square bracket, but note that here I am using here the double and sign but it is giving me here the integer 0. That means, there are no integers which are satisfying this thing. This means here what? Because this statement is operating over only the first element and it is something like this. I want to know whether x 1 is the first element is greater than 2 and the first element in x is is smaller than 5 and whether this condition holds true simultaneously or not. My first value here is 1, is this greater than 2 and my first value here is 1 which is smaller than 5. Is it possible? 1 cannot be greater than 2. So, this is false. 1 is smaller than 5, this is true. But here we have here a condition add that means, both these conditions have to be uh, hold simultaneously. And that is why there is no integer which is satisfying this condition and I am getting here the value 0. So, now after this slide, let us stop here. 
And uh, now you have seen that we have uh, considered different types of combination of the logical statement and we have tried to test their uh, truthfulness whether the statement is true or false. Now one thing is remaining that I want to give you the uh, details about the truth table, what is truth table and how it is created. So that we will try to do in the next lecture and in between you try to take such more example and try to execute them with your own hand on your own computer. Till then, goodbye.